friends welcome back to arc tutorials this is puppeteer full tutorial series for absolute beginners in today's episode we are going to talk about some of the best practices for writing optimized code when doing web scrapping there are a lot of things that we can implement wrong especially if you are a beginner this episode is to help you to understand some of the best practices I have learned working in top enterprises as part of implementing Puppeteer. Let's get started. This is part 25 of the series. If you have missed out on the first 24 parts, I've covered quite a bunch of uh, topics including detailed hands-on uh, coding, live coding and which you don't want to miss. So make sure that you go through this tutorial series in order to learn end-to-end -end of Puppeteer. Today, we'll talk about the best practices. So some of the best practices are first and foremost thing is respect robots.txt, right? Now what is robots.txt? It's a file in your web server, okay? Now what it tells is that what parts of your website can be accessed, okay? Now respect the directives provided in robots.txt file, especially when you implement web scrapping chances are that we want to when we go about scrapping the web pages always make sure that the data that is provided in robots.txt is honored it clearly tells you which pieces can be accessed and which are not always use delays and limits okay what happens is that if you don't implement delays and limits it will cause into aggressive scrapping okay which might always lead into overloading of the server and chances are that you may be blocked and you now if you're trying to do too many uh, requests in a certain limit uh, of time uh, this website that you're trying to scrap right they will understand there are too many requests coming from an IP and they will then try to avoid you by blocking okay you don't want that so make sure that you run those scripts in t intervals always use headless mode that's one of the most common recommendations that I give is because it will conserve your resources and also it will make it more efficient always set user agent now what is user agent user agent in the header when you set it will try and simulate for different browsers or devices okay so let's say you try to set a user agent as iPad or iPhone right so if you're running it as a bot the website that you are trying to access would respond correspondingly based on the user agent that you have set. Handle dynamic content. Now, a lot of websites will use JavaScript to render the content dynamically. Okay, that's where you should probably throw in page dot wait for selector or wait for navigation. Okay, you want that page to be responsive. You want the page to load the data that you're looking for. So always try and use page dot wait for selector once you have done some operations. All right. The next is try and use the CSS selectors to target the specific elements. One of the most common things is to use class, class or an ID, but there can be other selectors of CXS that you can always use and target. Limit parallelism, which means avoid to opening too many browser instances because it will cause problem um, when you are trying to you know run it on a server it will drain your resources pretty fast error handling now this is one of the most important things when you are trying to scrap multiple pages on a large volume you might want to handle errors in a more elegant in a more systematic way so that you don't miss out if something request fails put it in a log file put it in a queue so that you can retry it use page pooling now this is one of the most common mistakes a lot of people do when you are trying to scrap multiple pages create a page pool okay which means batch them group them into batches and don't pump everything into one go respect terms of use obviously I am always for ethical and legal way of doing web scrapping so make sure that you don't do anything illegal so make sure that you go through the terms and conditions of the website that you're trying to scrap right uh, make sure that whatever you're doing is genuine is legal and i always encourage that make sure if you're not sure go through the terms and conditions just to make sure that if you really need some data 
you can also contact that particular website owner for the permissions especially when you're doing enterprise related work you don't want any legal trouble all right those are the best practices i have uh, that i have learned over a period of time implementing large puppeteer applications in the next episode i will talk about the difference between selenium versus puppeteer Yet another important thing, a lot of time, a lot of you have written to me asking what is the difference, which one should be preferred, what are the pros, what are the cons, etc. So I'll be covering that in the detail in the next episode. We'll continue adding as many tutorials to this uh, series as possible. Uh, please do hit that like button for me. Please do subscribe to my channel. Do let me know your thoughts on these best practices. Thank you so much for joining. I'll see you in the next episode. We'll talk about Selenium versus Puppeteer. Thank you.